I'm sharing how I transformed this thrift store tall boy dresser with a brand new paint color. This is a take two on a dresser that I've already restyled, and I think you're gonna be amazed at what a different vibe it has now. Hello, my friends. Denise from Salvaged Inspirations, and welcome or welcome back to my furniture painting channel. Just let me get set up, and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. So here's what the original thrift store tall boy dresser looked like when I first purchased it. And if it looks at all familiar to you, that's probably because you've been following me for the last few years. You may remember this makeover I restyled in 2022. The first makeover was super cute. I had removed the Jetson panel, stained the top two drawers in an all natural stain and painted the rest of the dresser in a custom blue. But I didn't end up listing it for sale. I ended up sanding the sides to clean up some of the misbehaving paint and the particle board ended up chipping and making a mess. I tried fixing it by painting it over and I still didn't like what I saw. So let's get to fixing the back of these drawers, cleaning them up and giving it a brand new look with a new paint color. I started by removing all the original hardware. This is interesting hardware and quite unique for these days, although it's common for the, for the date of this dresser, but I do keep all my hardware for a future makeover. Once all the hardware was gone, it was time to remove all the drawers and give this dresser a really good cleaning. I like using my white lightning or TSP substitute in a spray bottle mixed with some water. It makes it very easy for me just to spray down the inside and the outsides of the drawers. And then using a large sponge, I give everything a wipe down. After I wipe everything down with the white lightning, it's time to rinse out the sponge and give it another wipe down with the clear water, which just gets rid of any residue. Once the dresser was all dry, it was time to fill the hardware holes with this Gorilla Epoxy Stick. This epoxy stick is very easy to use and it's a great alternative to Bondo. It doesn't require a two-part mixing. It doesn't have a strong odor like Bondo does, yet it still dries super hard. It's drillable and it does not shrink. It comes in a tube and it looks like putty or Play-Doh. And you tear off a little piece and you knead the putty until the two colors turn into a solid gray. Then you know it's ready to use. Here I'm rolling it up like a little noodle. <laughs> like a little noodle in between my hands and uh, just fitting it into the holes. And then I go back and I press more in just to fill, fill everything in nice and tight. But usually it's a little more pliable than this. I'm not going to lie. My basement is rather, my basement, AKA my studio is rather cold in these winter months. I do have a little heater down there, but it is pretty cool to work down there. So usually it's uh, this putty is a little more pliable and easy to work with. But I did want to share with you an alternative to Bondo. And speaking of which, out comes the Bondo, the all-purpose putty. So what I wanted to do was clean up the uh, particle board that was chipped on the side of the drawers. So for this, I brought out my Bondo and I mixed the two parts, the hardener in with the Bondo. And I just put it on a plate I grab the cream hardener and I use about, I always like to say, a golf sized or golf ball sized amount of putty to a pea sized amount of hardener. However, if you're using less, like here, I probably cut that in half then you need less of the cream hardener as well. Just keep in mind that when you're working with Bondo, you do have a limited time to work with it. So you wanna get it mixed up fairly quickly and you want to use it on your project very quickly because seriously, within about five minutes, it will start hardening up on you. So this is the side of the drawer that I want to smooth out. 
To create a straight edge, I used a paint stick, but any sort of board or straight edge would work. And what I did was I clamped it to the side of my drawer. Then using a putty knife, I went in and I started uh, pushing the Bondo into the side of the drawer, so the little cracks and divots into the drawer, and using the paint stick, as I said, like the, the backing or the ledge. Keep in mind, this does not have to be totally perfect because you're gonna be sanding all this down smooth in the end anyway. What I really did want though was to push that Bondo right in behind that paint stick so any of the divots that were there caused by the particle board would be filled in with the Bondo. I went ahead and did the exact same thing to the other side of the drawer. And here's a perfect example of exactly what I was saying about the Bondo drying out very, very quickly. I think I had only been working with it for maybe about four minutes and you can already tell that it is getting dry and more difficult to work with. However, I think this side ended up a little neater than my first side, so go figure. <laughs> So because I didn't spray these paint sticks with a WD-40 or anything to cause a barrier, what I did was I just waited until the Bondo was semi-dry before I removed these paint sticks. And I just gave them a little bit of a tap and removed them very carefully. The first side I did, the, the messy side I'll say, had dried a little more than uh, the other. So it was a little more difficult to remove the paint stick. So I just ended up scoring it with my uh, putty knife and then it finally came off no problem. I brought the dresser body into my sanding room and gave the entire body a uh, scuff sanding with a 150, I believe it was a 150 grit. And this scuff sanding seriously takes all of two minutes. Uh, it, I really encourage you not to skip this step because it's, it goes really fast, especially if you have a hand sander or, uh, or sorry, a palm sander or an orbital sander. You can. You can really scuff sand an entire piece within two, three minutes flat. Once I finished scuff sanding, I took my dollar store brush and brushed off all the dust. And I also used a tack cloth to remove any of the remaining dust afterwards. Then it was on to sanding the drawers and sanding the uh, fill in the, in the hardware holes. And of course, sanding the sides of these drawers where the Bondo repair was perfectly smooth. To sand the Bondo repair, I ended up using a 220 grit on my orbital sander. That's uh, it's not an aggressive grit at all and the reason why I put the 220 grit onto my orbital sander was to not sand through the Bondo and go through to the chipboard again. So I just really took my time with sanding it down little by little and making it all flush. Once I had it smoothed out as best as I could, I brought it back into my paint room and using some Dixie Belle mud filler, I started filling in all the tiny little imperfections that were left along with the back of that particle board. This Dixie Belle mud is fabulous for this detail work because it sands so smoothly by hand and it just fills in all those little divots beautifully. After I filled the particle board or the chipboard with the Dixie Bell mud, I moved on and started filling the tiny little details of the hardware holes as well. Once the wood filler was dry, I brought it into my sanding room and sanded the hardware holes down. And by hand, I sanded and smoothed out the side of the drawers. And whenever I'm trying to get a squared off finish or a totally flat finish, I always wrap my sandpaper around a uh, wood block. This way it gives me really crisp lines with crisp corners as well.
I have brushed off all the sanding dust and check out how straight and perfect this edge looks. Just wait until it's all painted up. I went ahead and finished all the sanding on all the drawers and then went back into my paint room and set up for spray painting. Now I don't have, well, this is my dedicated space for spray painting, but as you can see, it is not a real spray booth. So I'm also going to share how I control my air gun settings so it doesn't overspray in my whole space. Uh, but I do cover my walls with plastic. I cover my floors with a drop cloth and I find this is very, very helpful in keeping the workspace somewhat clean. Now for the fun part. I am getting to try a brand new color in the Dixie Bell National Park collection and it's called Acadia. This silk all-in-one paint line has the primer and the top coat already included and it's a really nice thick pigmented paint. So to shoot it through my spray gun, what I do is I thin it with about 10% water. So I don't uh, contaminate or dilute the paint in the jar. I pour it into a cup and then I'll add the water and mix it in there. And here you can see how it's dripping off my paint stick because I want the proper viscosity of my paint uh, to shoot through that sprayer. So you don't want to water it down so much that it's watery. And what I look for as it's dripping off the paint stick is that it flows in one even stream it doesn't break up, it doesn't drip off, it's one steady stream, and that means that the paint still has some nice body to it. You can even see that it has body when you're just looking at it. It doesn't look watery, it looks like it has some sort of movement to it. So I like to compare it to a thick, a melted thick milkshake. So that's the consistency that I always look for when I am thinning a paint to put through my paint sprayer. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have a spray booth. I have a paint room and I just kind of uh, improvise so I don't get paint all over the place, especially when I'm shooting paint. Because if you have your settings up high and a lot of paint coming out of your paint spray or your paint gun, it can get quite messy. So what you can do is always dial back, like here as I'm painting the side, you see that it's not a, a large fan or a large amount coming out of the gun. And this is because I've dialed back my settings. I'm just making sure to overlap as I go and take my time with shooting this paint. And it really keeps the paint room nice and clean. I, I don't have a lot of overspray at all. Now I don't usually keep it this low when I'm spraying furniture, but I did want to show you for demonstration purposes that it definitely can be done. And I'm often asked how much paint is used when I'm brushing in compared to how much paint is used when I'm spraying. So here's a look at the jar and I would say maybe, I don't know, not even a quarter of it's gone. I, I would say what, maybe 15, 20% if that. And keep in mind that I did thin it with water. So when you do spray a finish, you usually use less paint for sure. Once my first coat was dry, I gave it a very light sanding and prepped it for the second coat. And once everything was lightly sanded and the dust removed with a tack cloth, I went ahead and removed all the drawers because now we're gonna get the side of this dresser and make sure we get the lip of the drawers all painted up lovely. And again, for demo purposes, on the second coat, I've adjusted my spray gun again to fan out a little bit more and release a little more paint. So you'll see the difference in timing of how long it takes to paint and you do see a little bit of overspray now. 
And speaking of overspray, here's a quick tip on how to keep the inside of your furniture nice and clean when you are spraying or shooting paint. I just use cardboard. Uh, I, I sometimes mask off depending on the project, but for the most part, I just use a little piece of cardboard. I place it where it needs to be so the overspray does not go into the inside of the furniture. And then if there's any on the railings, I just end up sanding, sanding it off to make it a really nice, crisp, clean edge. And I did the exact same thing for that Bondo drawer repair. I just put the cardboard right uh, along the edge and sprayed. After I sprayed two coats of this new Acadia Green, which I just love by the way, I ended up installing some new modern brushed brass hardware and that was the makeover. One solid color and a totally new look. So. Here's the before, what it looked like, the original original dresser from the thrift store. Here's the first makeover with the natural uh, stained top and the custom blue paint job. And here's the after after with the brand new Acadia sprayed finish. I am very curious which makeover is your favorite. I'm gonna vote for the green. I think the solid color makes this dresser look a lot more sophisticated and modern, but I can't wait to hear what you think. So please leave me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, and you can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me today, and until next time, have a fabulous week. Bye, guys.